wrong motives and she concludes by saying many receive applause for virtues which they do not possess in other words here comes a man and he makes a million dollar contribution to the church building fund and the church puts a plaque on the wall on every wall in his name God examines the reason why he gave that gift and there are no plaques with his name on the walls in heaven because God reads not the act he reads the heart from which the act proceeds let me repeat I'll give you a different quotation child guidance page 201 paragraph 3 every course of action has a twofold character and importance it is either virtuous or vicious right or wrong according to the motive which prompts it what I'm trying to say is everything we do it receives its determination from God based on the condition of ours. Proverbs 4.23 Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are what? The issues of life. Now the Hebrew word for issues means the outgoings or the outflowings. Everything connected to human existence begins in the heart. And so the Bible says you keep your heart with all diligence, not some, with all diligence, because every issue of human existence comes from the heart. So I repeat the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew 4, 12, verse 34. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now let's take a look at an evil heart. Listen to Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 20. Our subject is heart to heart. Mark, the very next book, chapter 7, reading from verse 20, the words of Jesus Christ. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, Blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. In other words, sin does not proceed from the outside in. Sin proceeds from the inside out. Is that clear? Amen. You didn't convince me that it's clear. If it's clear, say amen. amen. Evil begins in the heart. In other words, no one can make you evil. No one can make me evil. We are conveniently or inconveniently born with an evil nature. So Jesus says, that which cometh out of the man, I think I heard the phone, that defileth the man. Let's look at another heart. Galatians 5, reading from verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Do not be deceived by the wording of Paul. He does not say there is no law. He says there is no law against love. There is no law against joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance. There is no law against those. And using the principle of opposites, it means there is a law for them. These things are consistent with the law. But if you read from verse 19 of Galatians 5, we find a list of things against which there is a law. But the, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Meaning the list is not complete. There is a law against those. There is no law against love, joy, peace, long suffering. There is a law that supports it. But whether it's adultery, fornication, and cleanness, Verse 19, Galatians 5, love, joy, peace, long suffering, Galatians 5.22, both proceed from where? The heart. All right. Let me repeat Matthew 12.34. Out of the abundance of the heart, 
the mouth speaketh. <coughs> Remember that mankind was made how? In the image of God. Ellen White writes, man was to bear God's image both in outward resemblance and in character. Someone should have said amen for that. Amen. What she's saying is in some way God looks like us. Both in outward resemblance and in character. So that some of the things we do, the way human beings exist and interact and function, is probably the way God conducts himself in the heavenly courts. It is also true of God that out of the abundance of his heart, he speaks. Amen. Now go with me to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20, reading from verse 1. Our subject is heart to heart. Exodus 20, reading from verse 1, the second book of the Bible. Do we have that? Yes. The Bible says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And the commandments go all the way down to verse 17. Now, what is God doing according to verse 1? He is speaking. There's a sharp person to my left. There's sharp people to my right, but they said nothing. <laughs> The Bible says, and God spake all these words, saying, now, using the principle that Jesus Christ expressed in Matthew 12, 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, what can we conclude about the source of the Ten Commandments? They came from where? The heart of God. Thank you. Not one solitary isolated in there. <laughs> when God spoke the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, He spoke from His heart. But when I say God spoke the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, do I mean God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Ghost? I'm not suggesting three gods. I'm referring to the members of the Trinity. Which one said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me? Was it the Father, the Son, or the Holy Ghost? And we need to establish that. Alright, you're ahead of me and that's okay. I'll catch up with you. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible says, For there is one God and one what? Mediator between God and men, and who is that? The man Christ Jesus. Now, think with me what is the function of a mediator? A mediator is someone who stands where? Between two warring parties. A mediator has no words of his own. You didn't get it. My fault, let me say it again. When you mediate between two parties, you take the expression from one and pass it to the other. And then the one on the right speaks to you and you pass that to the one on the left. And that's how the mediator functions. The mediator does not step back and let the two parties talk to each other. No, the mediator stands between and the mediator is the medium of communication. Do you understand me? Whatever party on the right says comes through him or her. Whatever party on the left says comes through him or her. That's a mediator. The Bible says there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Now, we have some insight from the writings of Ellen White. Conflict and Courage, page 20, paragraph 7. After his transgression, referring to Adam, God would communicate with man only through Christ and his angels. After his transgression, Adam's transgression, God would communicate with man only through Christ and his angels. So that the person who came down into the garden 
to talk to Adam and Eve after the sin that he committed, 